This is Hey JV. Here's JV Buno. A new 47 page report on Brian Laundrie's final moments at Florida's Carlton Reserve with new information on what investigators found, including a wooden box, several photographs, and a handwritten half note. Plus, what information Brian Laundrie's parents declined to give the ME's office about their son. We're going to get into it here, everybody, on WFLA Now. J.B. Buno here with you live alongside, of course, WFLA senior investigator Walt Buteau. Great to have Walt back on stream. And, Walt, you and I have been combing through this 47-page yeah. report. Let's just, before we get into the details of the report, let's remind folks that the big piece of information came back in January when the FBI released uh, their summary of their investigation. And I'll read, of course, the most uh, important line uh, that we have in that report. And it says, upon further search of the area, investigators found human remains later confirmed to be Mr. Laundry, along with a backpack, notebook, and a revolver. A review of the notebook revealed written statements by Mr. Laundry claiming responsibility for Miss Petito's death. That from the FBI back in January. And now what we expect in the months ahead, more subsequent reports, data dumps, document yeah. dumps to come out. And this is one of them from the Florida District 12 Medical Examiner's Office detailing the discovery of human remains at Florida's Carlton Reserve. And then, of course, the subsequent identification of those remains. Walt, what's your biggest takeaway in reading through these pages? So I think one thing that I don't th we didn't realize, a couple things, actually, you know, the type of revolver it was, a 38 caliber although it, oddly it seems like a cross between a 38 caliber and a 457 um, and it was a snub nose of a weapon we know now that uh, we also know uh, we knew he was shot once but we know there were two other live rounds left in the bullet and I think it's interesting that the vast majority quoting the report now the vast majority of the skeleton has been recovered so they had most of the body we sort of had some confusion because we had heard a jawbone and uh, teeth were sent in to be examined um, and that's true, but they did discover, again, most of the skeleton. And, 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 and we also know that by 4.30, the day after the remains were found, uh, that they, they had positively identified Brian Laundry. And you said it, I think, you know, that, that second notebook. Think about that, a small second notebook. I want to get a, into a that, yeah. A second notebook and a, a half-written, a handwritten half-note. Half what does that mean? I don't know um, what that means. Right. And but there was, okay, so let's break this down. And again, we, we have the full document here. We've been reading through it. Um, it it's pretty dense. And, and it does have a lot of, it's got a lot of new, smaller pieces of information. Yeah. And a yeah. lot of these nuggets, Walt, a few months back would have been this grand revelation. But now they're just smaller breadcrumbs, if you will, piecing yeah. together this puzzle that was Brian Laundry uh, ending up being not too far away from home, being at Florida's Carlton Reserve. A big yeah. thing, we're going to get into the journal, the notebook, the handwritten <clears throat> half note, all of that. But one of the big things as well was when Brian Laundry's remains were originally, when we had the discovery of a partial human skull, that was the breaking news report that we had on WFLA Now. We had team coverage, our live stream, of, of course, across <clears throat> Facebook and YouTube. When that report came out, there was a sizable amount of people that didn't believe that it was Brian Laundry, And even after they came out and they said that they identified that it was Brian Laundry through dental records, that there were still folks on the internet, uh, conspiracy theorists abound, yeah. saying that it was not Brian Laundry. But when you go now into this report, it wasn't just the skull that was found. It wasn't a few pieces of bone here and there. They found almost the entirety of Brian Laundrie's skeleton. And of course, the DNA analysis that would be done weeks later would later identify that it was in fact, it would confirm what we already knew, that this was Brian Laundrie. And then of course, the cause of death later on revealed to be suicide by self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Yeah, and, and they detail, you know, not to get too gruesome, every bone that was found. They do. And some um, other grisly details that We'll discuss. We a may little, discuss, but a I'm little not, bit. We won't include it in our TV story. And it is. It's something we would have guessed. I think uh, yeah. just because of where it, he was. But but I think uh, also of note. I think that I, I I think is important that part of this. We just got this report today, but part of it was just completed on February fourth of this this month. So part of it was just completed. That's toxicology. Uh, I think we had asked people. Well, did they do a drug screen? Did they do a toxicology? And they did. And there were no drugs found 
around in Brian's system. But again, that information was not finalized until the 4th of February. So that, you know, people, again, the, that can not to speak to those folks, but, but again, theoretically, why did it take so long? Well, maybe it didn't take that long relatively to everything. It's a very detailed report, 47 pages long. And, and again, like you said, including a lot of details. Uh, I, 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 again, I'm taken, uh, I'm really focused on that wooden box contained yeah. a small notebook and photographs, quoting here, some of the photos include Brian Laundry, which could give you, obviously, when they, when they come up on the scene and they, they see a body, they're looking for a body, and they see a box, it's got the suspect's picture in it. They probably had a pretty good idea of who it was at that moment. And the note, we're going to talk about the notebook for, for a <clears throat> moment, folks. We want to let you know you can use the hashtags you see on the yellow stripes in the left and right side of your screen. You might see <clears throat> in the pinned comment below, as we do on WFLA Now. Hello to Facebook. Hello to YouTube. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, you can use those hashtags, hashtag HJB, hashtag HeyWalt. That's your way, of course, interactively of uh, joining the conversation. We can bring up some of your comments. You probably, many of you have probably read through a little bit of this 47-page report, or maybe you've read it in its entirety just because so many people have been really laser focused on this story from uh, from day one, and, and those folks, uh, you know, who have just <clears throat> continuously asked um, questions. And there's no question bigger than why. why. Why did this happen? So people want to know where, with where we are in the story. And even though we have now, of course, the admission, according to the FBI, the admission that Brian Laundry claimed responsibility for Gabby Petito's death. Even though we have that that very very big key piece of information, the one big question that eludes us still is why did Brian kill Gabby? If he did, of course, admit it in, in the in the notebook, then what was said in the notebook, and was there any <clears throat> details given as to why he would take the life of the person that he was supposed to spend the rest of his life with, spend, supposed to spend the rest of his life in happiness and bliss with Gabby Petito, instead um, claims responsibility for her death in the notebook. So why? So people want to know what's in the notebook. But here's the thing, as Walt was just talking about, we now have several pieces of, of, of documents that were found near the remains. So we're we going to get... And let's be clear, we have a identified by investigators, we have a journal yep. and a notebook and a handwritten half note, whatever that means. So, so, the, so the small notebook was in found inside a wooden box. Yeah. This, is, this wooden box is a, is a new nugget of information. Fascinating, I think. Fascinating. So because we've, we've heard, of course, about the dry bag, the dry bag that was discovered. Right. And the dry bag is key because the dry bag, the contents of a dry bag are going to stay dry because um, Florida's Carl Carlson Reserve was flooded uh, just w through persistent rains in September. So the journal was found in the dry bag. The small notebook and photographs, multiple photographs found inside or with this wooden box. That, that was also in the dry bag, as I, as I referenced right. that. Um, and then I, but then here's an interesting thing, yes. too. Yep. A piece of paper and a red hat with the logo Moab Coffee Roasters was noted in a grassy area. So is that piece of paper the handwritten half note? It doesn't really clarify, but regardless, the, it, it had to be important enough that they mentioned it, right? Yeah, and... Uh, and it had to have some writing on it. Right. So you have, you have the... And I'm just reading through some of the comments here. My eyes are going down here because I'm reading <clears> through <throat> your hashtag AJB, hashtag wall comments as they come in. There's this main scene and then the secondary scene. And what right. was the distance between the two scenes, Walt? You, I, I remember ha noting it somewhere here in my notes. But they weren't, they weren't directly next to each other. It was a little bit of a distance away. 250 east of the main scene. Yards? Uh, feet. Feet, you said. Yeah. Okay, so 100 feet. 250 feet. Okay, so that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good distance away, but in the same area. Yeah. And at the main scene, they found clothing like the green shorts, green belt, um, backpack. Slip-on shoes. And then the secondary scene contained the handwritten half note, which, which we're not entirely <clears throat> sure what, what that is and whether or not that has any significance to the FBI's investigation? Was it just a, uh, you know, a piece of the notebook that came ripped out or was it, Part was it actually journal? pertinent? Right. right. Uh, yeah, we don't know. We don't know. And, you know, when we hear from the FBI, we don't know where they discovered that admission of sorts from Brian. Do we know it was in the journal? Did the journal somehow get con confused with the, uh, that, uh, that, um, the, uh, um, um, which try, which try and get at? <laughs> Did the journal get confused with the notebook? Right, right, because okay. 
because we do have we, have, we have a journal and a small notebook. Now, again, I, I noted this on Twitter. If the use of terminology is consistent, the notebook is what contained the admission uh, of, of, Gavin, That's what of the claiming exact responsibility. Was? Yes. So in, I'll read this again. So <clears throat> in the FBI's summary, they say that it was inside a review of the notebook revealed written statements by Mr. Longo claiming responsibility for Ms. Petito's death. So, so we have it as a notebook. If you believe that terminology is consistent across all of these documents, then it's the notebook that contained this note. Let's with superimpose that it. over this, which is on page uh, two of the of this report. Yep, I'm looking. At I it. was informed that's from the detective uh, in in this who wrote this part of the report. I was informed that a dry bag was located that contained a journal along with a wooden box that contained a small notebook mm -hmm. and a photographic picture of Brian Laundry. I was advised there were additional photographic pictures, but the contents were undisclosed to me at this time. Yep, and then so. if you go now to page two of the second report. It, then it says, we are informed that an apparent dry bag was located in another area approximately 250 right. feet southwest of the main area, which contained a journal along with a wooden box that contained a small notebook and photographs, some of the photos, including that of Brian Laundrie. So, yeah. okay. So why is this important? People explain, okay, journal, <clears throat> notebook, handwritten half note. Why is this important? Because... The biggest answer that you at home are still seeking is why Brian killed Gabby Petito, again, according to the FBI, claiming responsibility for her death. Why did this happen? We, we, it's, it's been the question from day one, and it remains the question now. Why did this happen? And we need to know, as journalists, of course, what we're talking about as far as the, uh, the, the, the items that were gathered here at the Carlton Reserve, because... We're, of course, and we're, we're very diligent as journalists, putting through FOIA requests, Freedom of Information and Act requests, to request certain documents and to say this is what we are hoping to obtain through uh, obtaining public records. So when we submit that to the FBI and, you know, if, if we put in, hey, we're looking for the, the journal and then they send us the journal and it doesn't have anything in it or there's no redacted information that would hint to, of course, that message left by Brian Laundrie, then, then they would say, oh, you should have requested the notebook. It's like, oh, well, well, we didn't know that there was a... Now we know more about the specific details, or excuse me, the specific items that were found near Brian Laundrie's remains, the Carlton Reserve. It helps us understand um, what we're trying to find as far as what contains that answer <clears throat> that we so... And, and so, I think you hit the so nail on the head. Seek. The why, I think, is what you said, because, you know, it's... it's it's a story of interest. We get criticized for doing what we're doing here and, and uh, sort of continuing something that seemingly is over, but we look for answers. And I think, again, the answer we don't have is the why. We can really only speculate on the why. We know, we suspect, you know, something happened that pushed Brian over the edge, but we don't know what that is. And we don't know whether he revealed that in his note. And, and I think um, people want to know that. They want that answer. I think we're going to get some of the questions and comments loaded up here, and I'm trying to get a few. I'm going to start with YouTube. Hello to our YouTube audience. Hope you guys are, are, uh, are I see that our, our YouTube audience is actually still building. Um, you have, while I, I get in a couple of comments here, while you had some details about the gun. Yeah, and, so and the, um, gun, the gun is interesting also as well because we're learning Brian Laundrie being right-handed as well. Some of those details. Well, so he's right-handed, but he sh he um, shot himself according to this in the left side of his head, um, which you know is doesn't counter intuitive, right? Uh, so here's what we know about the gun, and this is interesting. On t we're calling it a 38 caliber, a 38 special. The firearm was a European American Arms 38 special, 38 caliber, on barrel. 357 Magnum, other side of barrel. I don't know what that means, except it sounds like it's an amalgamation of two guns. And based upon the markings and appearance, the firearm was a Windicator revolver. The cylinder contained two live rounds and one spent round of ammunition. And in another part of the report, we see that that spent round of ammunition was found, or the bullet, if you will, had uh, traveled not to be too gruesome, through Mr. Laundry's skull, one side to the other, it says in the report, cleanly, and then was found 50 to 60 feet away in, quote, six inches of dirt by a detective. Mm -hmm. um, so 
So that that what is that? Some gun expert out there might say, "Oh yeah, you could combine a 38 Special with a 357." I, I I don't know that, but that's the sort of weapon we had. And you were telling me we lose track of the details we know and we don't know. And I, you were telling me we didn't know that the caliber of the weapon. I was I didn't I didn't realize that. Yeah, no, we, we had heard, of course, that it was a revolver. <laughs> we didn't know the caliber of weapon yeah. that was used. We do know that there was one firearm missing from the laundry home. Uh, and, uh, of course, that is believed to be the firearm that was taken from the home. Um, but let's get to some more. We just had Jeanette's comment here and, and asking uh, about the gun. We now have more details about the gun. And um, I do. there's other things I really want to get to, but I want to get some of the comments going in. We're going to go to Wanda on YouTube, Wanda Refner. Hashtag AJB, hashtag A Walt. Will we ever find out the contents, or I think that's what she contents. meant to say, contents of what was in the notebook? And will Chris and Roberta Laundry? Uh, will they ever talk or have a press conference or a release? Okay, you texted Bertolino this morning, correct? I got a no comment, but that's not, I don't know if I would say I have a relationship with him. Uh, maybe other reporters will be more successful. He said no comment is what he said. And I texted him, and he actually responded a short time ago. He said, hi, JB, no comment on the report. So that's where we oh. are with. So you got, um, a, you got a high, I didn't get a high Walt. Um, you got a high JB. I, I got a, I didn't, yeah, well, I did. I got a high JB. But, uh, again, no comment on the report is, I'll be all right. is, <laughs> is what he said. Um, but can I, can I interject here real quick? Because I, yeah. there's an important note in here that is one of our stories, in part of one of our stories. Um, this is by Detective Investigator Busby, Ronald L. Busby Jr., um, and he writes... When I asked about the decedent's social history, that would be Brian Laundrie. That's what I was going to get to next, yes. Um, and it's important. He, and let me go a little farther up. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Laundrie informed me that their son was very healthy and had no known medical history. I'm not sure why that was important there. The, the decedent did not take any medications and had no known primary care physician. When I asked about the decedent's social history... Mr. and Mrs. Laundry stated that they did not want to provide that information. Read into that what you will, but that is what they, I don't know what the detective was looking for there, but they did not want to provide that bit of information to investigators. So again, to, just to clarify for folks, the medical examiner's office or representative of the medical examiner's office uh, asked about Brian Laundry's social history and that Mr. and Mrs. Laundry, Chris and Roberta, the parents, stated that they did not want to provide that information. Now, now to me, there, there's been a lot of folks on Twitter that have been making a very large, um, you, you know, pointing this out in, yeah. in a big way and saying, oh, my goodness, well, like, why, wouldn't they, why wouldn't they give up his social history? And it's because, again, y there's nothing that says in the law that you absolutely have to. I'm, I wasn't that surprised by that, Walt. I don't know what about do, you. What, what, do you. What do you interpret social history as? Uh, I don't know what that means. Perhaps maybe his, and social history could be his, um, you know, uh, friends and his immediate, you know, uh, yeah, his social history. So people that he knew, people that he frequently contacted with, um, had contact with. Um, I'm not necessarily sure exactly that that's what it is, but I'm not surprised that that information wasn't given Absol and, and right, just, and let's let's keep this in mind too. It's almost they, on they, par with with what we've had over the last several months sure. with the story. Well, but also they just found out right. that their son was was dead, and maybe they thought that, but now they know for sure. And also and, too, Chris Laundry, Brian Laundry's father, being there <clears throat> that day at the Carlton Reserve, and being there in the area where, when of course the discovery was made. I don't know about you. I read through this report. I didn't see any mention of Chris Laundry in this report. Did you that uh, that the decedent's father was there at no. Mayakahatchee at no. Carlton Reserve that day? I didn't we, see it. We do have a better timeline, I think, than we had. And correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember this, but we do know that uh, at that when the and I assume this is when the Laundries were there. Actually, you know what? No, that's Brian Christopher Laundry, so not Chris Laundry. It does say on October 20th at approximately 8:20. Search groups. That's all it says. Search we groups. know who the search groups are yeah. now. Found the backpack and shoes that were identified as belonging to Brian Laundry. So you realize at that point, if you can read between the lines, who identified them as belonging to Brian Laundry, more than likely his parents. Um, and um, and then the personal belongings were surrounded by apparent skeletal human remains that were scattered on top of the dirt ground. Can you imagine being the parents yeah. and being out there at that moment and uh, knowing, oh, that's my son's backpack i mean because i think that's what would happen you would know you would pretty you would be very 
just a frightening sight and a horrifying sight and a very sad sight for them, I imagine. Yeah, um, and uh, again, we're still talking about the, you know, we're, we're talking about parents of a of a of a young man who had you know the entirety of his life in front of him. Twenty three years then old. F- in a in a series of weeks or months, depending on on how you want to frame it. Um, the, it, everything just goes horribly wrong in, in this in this nightmare scenario scenario for for the parents. So to, to echo exactly what you were about to finish your comment with there, Walt, I'm not surprised that in that moment when they were uh, approaching the family and saying, "Hey, would you please provide Brian Laundry's social history to us?" They just you know they declined to give it, yeah. and that's that to me isn't. We know so much about Brian Laundry now. Um, is providing his social history is that that big of a big of a deal? I, I, that's again, that's up to of course you, our commenters, there, wherever you're watching. There's very from. little context given to that, by the way. I've read the two paragraphs in front of it, so it would be inter- Detective Busby knows why he asked that. It does. It's not really even implied in the report why he asked that. But so Wanda, to back to Wanda's <clears> comment, <throat> and I don't want to leave Wanda hanging here. Will we ever find out the contents of what was in the notebook? And will Chris and Roberta Laundrie ever talk uh, and have a press conference or a release of some kind? Let's break down the first one first. Will we ever find out the contents of what was in the notebook, okay? So there is plenty, plenty of redactions here in the document. See these black 13, boxes, 13 everybody? Reda- 13 redacted. They appear to be photos, right? Yep, yep, there it is. So a, a lot of photo assets that are redacted we from did, this We did, by the way, uh, we asked for them anyway. And yep. we asked for why they were redacted, and we were given the statute that allows them to redact it. I didn't review the statute, but I, I, I will. Um, but there's captions that are interesting that I'll read through here at some point as you go on, JB. Um, yeah, but, I mean, mostly in part, Walt, isn't it just it's, – it's photographs of the scene, right? And, where, well, views, and of the, might... views of the skull. Um, so right. they're graphic. I mean, I don't even know that we would use them. Right. Um, so um, – and let's, I'll just, we, we, while we're talking about the graphic contents of this, of this report, um, there, and, and I did put it out on Twitter, and we'll just say that, listen, there was a reason why, and it has to do with Florida wildlife, that there yes. was a reason why the remains were skeletal. And this is something that we talked about on WFLA now. The, the folks that were with us for so many of those live streams, <laughs> they will remember how many times we noted just the different types of animals that, that are out there. You know, of course, the carnivorous animals that exist in the Carlton Reserve, and some of them are mentioned in this report as possible reasons as to why we have skeletal remains uh, found at the Carlton Carnivore Reserve. Carnivore so, scavenging is what it says. Yeah. And the, some of the pictures and, show that, so very carn- gruesome. Horrible. And car- carnivorous Horrible. activity. So we yeah. won't, um, it's, you know, I put a little bit, a little blurb about it on my, on my Twitter account, but that there's not much more to say other than Florida wildlife, uh, of course, got to those remains um, before before search crews did. Um, so back to now Wanda's question. And um, will we ever find out the contents of what was in the notebook? It's, <clears throat> it, it's, it was never going to be in this. This is a medical examiner's report. What, what really is the um, treasure trove of information, if you will, is going to be the FBI's um, documentation on their investigation. Um, and, of course, journalists, uh, including myself, journalists out there who have uh, submitted Freedom of Information Act requests, FOIA requests, to try to get that information from, um, from the FBI. Uh, it's now a, a waiting game. And um, I, I think I had heard a few weeks back that my request was being processed. And, and it's about whenever the <coughs> FBI processes that request. Um, so the, that's where we would get something like that piece of information. But at the same time, the contents of the notebook might even be redacted when the FBI does, in fact, decide to get back to us and release some of the documents pertaining to their investigation into the, the death of Gab. And I, I, just to be clear for our audience, because I'm as transparent and open and honest as a journalist as there is, uh, I submitted FOIA requests for both the death investigation, the, or excuse me, the homicide investigation of Gabby Petito and as well the, um, the, the death investigation that was later determined to be a suicide of Brian Laundrie. So we're waiting on those documents, and it's really up to the FBI. I, we, we, Walt, you and I have talked about it. Sometimes a FOIA request can languish and kind of sit in FOIA purgatory for, for weeks, months. Sometimes it'll be years, a decade plus. It, it, it's so difficult to say, you know, when we expect to hear back. Uh, there's so many factors that come into play. 
but we that's where we would find out the case. It was never going to be in the medical examiner's report. It was always going to be probably uh, upon request from a member of the public or a member and, of the media. Know, to go with how it all works, we would have seen these documents if there were a trial, if they were that's su correct. submitted as that's evidence. That's correct, and yep. But obviously there won't be a trial, so what is their obligation to release it? I think I've heard from FBI experts who, I think we interviewed one, who believes the information will be released. Um, and as far as Gabby, the, the, the laundries talking to the media, I, I'm going to say, you know, what type of, I don't know them, what type of people are they? Are they private people? I mean, would you, I mean, ask yourself, Wanda, or your friend, if you were, you know, somehow hounded, would you talk? I think some would and some don't. And that's going to be completely up to them. And will there be money offered? There could be money offered. And what do they, point. right, that's exactly my point. What would Chris and Roberta Laundrie have to gain by, by speaking and yeah. by uh, conducting uh, their first? Maybe to clarify, uh, the, I don't know, to bring Maybe they would. To, to, to talk about their son. I mean, that's how I would talk to them. You, don't you, let us know who your son was. Because right now, all we know about their son is... We know about his worst possible moments, right? That's yes. all we know. Yep. That's all we know. But I would, I'll tell you right now that, a, that, a, that an attorney or a public relations <laughs> strategist or somebody that was in the ear of Chris and Roberta Laundry, the first thing that they are going to say is you would have to go into that knowing that there is a sizable amount of people out there you will not be able to convince that there are yeah, people out there that are true. so stubborn in, in their yeah. way of thinking that you could – you could even present evidence that, um, to, to the contrary of what people think about <clears throat> your, your son and your son's memory, um, and still there are just going to be people that you cannot convince. So, yeah, does, does, does enough money get, um, get, get the attention of a, of a Chris and, and Roberta Laundry to speak in a documentary or a series of some kind or to speak? Um, yeah, that's, that's only, that's the only people that would know that are Chris and Roberta Laundry and of course their attorney, Stephen Bertolino, who as let's not forget, Stephen Bertolino is a, it goes beyond just being an attorney representing the Laundry family. He is a, a friend of theirs going back a long time, way before yeah. he was there, basically their, their attorney on standby. The moment that, that there was trouble in this case, Bertolino was, was representing, uh, not just, um, not just Chris and Roberta, but Brian as well. So, um, and it, it would be up to the three of them, I believe, and, and really ultimately Chris and Roberta to determine if they're ever going to speak. So, JB, somebody just sent me a picture um, on... Uh, I think I'm getting the same pictures as well, but it, yeah. Could this be the wooden box? Did you get that one? I did, and, and that... I would um, say no, because it fit in that dry bag. Correct. And you're looking at the one behind... Is it behind Gabby? Yeah, it's, yeah but... I, I don't... That looks like part of the... It looks like a trunk. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I just... I um. Oh, I, man, that wooden box, doesn't that just add to this... The lore, if you will, of this story. Every every single solitary time that we talk about this story, there's a different object of fascination. Yeah. Uh, the notebook, of course, has been an object of fascination now for months. Now this wooden box that yeah. um, that Laundry uh, said to have, you know, it was important enough for him to have on him when right. he went into the Carlton Reserve with the revolver. Well, and one other note too: um, three rounds in that revolver, um, but also yes, right. he had a he, he, he had flares. I don't know if he had a flare gun, but he had flares, mm -hmm. and he had um, he had um, a, a, a tent, and the the detective makes note of the fact that that the tent had not been pitched. The tent was in a backpack, so it is interesting that he did not. I think somebody pointed out, possibly sarcastically, definitely sarcastically. Oh, sure, he went in there for a walk. You bring a tent on a walk, you know, and and it's a, it's a good point. Um, he went in there with a tent and flares obvious, and, a, and a handgun. You know, you know, we, don't, we don't know what his intention was when he went in there, but we know what happened. You know what's interesting as well? So Brian Laundrie goes into the, into the Carlton Reserve in Florida. He's carrying a, you know, he's carrying a revolver. Uh, he's carrying these very, very personal effects, if you will. And uh, one of the things that, that <clears throat> isn't mentioned at all in this report is a phone. Now, yeah, if that's you, true. It's very, very interesting to me, because we're all. If there's one thing that you're always in possession of, it's your it's your phone. And while the Carlton Reserve is very remote and likely, you know, Brian, who had been there in the in the past, as we understand it, likely knew that 
there wasn't cell service in the Carlton Reserve to not for, for there not to be a phone discovered here that that leads you to believe that, that could take you down a couple of different paths. But that your phone is your connection to what's going on in the world. So I also too find it interesting that they have. I mean, we're talking about a, a, a flimsy piece of paper, this handwritten half note that they're talking about. It's this report is extraordinarily detailed. No mention of a of a cellular device. No mention of a phone. That's of any a really kind. good point. I hadn't thought about what wasn't in the report, but it's a really really good point because we had all these details. Oh, burner phone this, burner phone that. He had a phone, but even if he didn't, even if he doubted the cell service. Do you go into a place like that that you're seeing there from Eagle Eight without your a phone? Your phone is like your lifeline. Right. And even, okay, so, he, and uh, let's just paint a picture for a second. If you go in there and you decide, you decide that you want to come out with your life and, and you decide that you, that you could come out to maybe a point fringe Carlton Reserve with a little bit of service. We know because we were on the outskirts of the Carlton Reserve and we were able to get some cell service, but... Brian Laundry did not uh, have a, or at least, let me, let me, let me I, want, I want to make this clear. It's, we don't know that he didn't have a phone on him. All we know is that a phone wasn't found. And so, this is not an evidence list. This that's, is, that's right? So this true. Is a, this is an autopsy, but yep. at the same time, it makes, it's interesting. You start to try to read the tea leaves. What was included and why did the detective find the, why did, why did somebody find it important to talk about a small piece of paper near the, the hat and another detective, a handwritten half note. You would think that a phone, if found, would somehow make it into this, yep. uh, because we've heard you know, was such very, very a lot of details in here, obviously, and we don't hear anything we anything about that phone. We're going to go through a few more details in this one. in this report. Walt's got his two reports coming up tonight, everybody on WFLA News Channel Eight at five o'clock and six o'clock. So Walt is a, is a busy guy today as he's uh, kind of combing through this 47 page report and, and, and he has in large part, but then again, of course you have to condense it down for yeah. your broadcast report on television. So that's Walt, why the internet is so good. And a show like this is so good because of that. Exactly what you said, because this because does, we can, d doesn't have to be condensed. That's right. Um, if you, if you Walt, if you need to run, you no, just I'm let good. me know. We're good. Okay. Um, I want to, I want to focus on, on page two because the page two is really the, the summary here and it, and it brings, uh, everything to the surface as far as the the highlights yeah. of this report. I want to read this paragraph. The second, okay, so there's the main scene, and remember now the secondary scene about 250 feet away. What was at the secondary scene? Listen, the secondary scene contained skeletal animal remains, a handwritten half note, and a hat with the logo Moab Coffee Roasters. So let's talk about that last little bit there. Hat with Moab Coffee Roasters. There is a Moab Coffee Roasters in Moab, Utah. So that is believed to be the, uh, the little piece of merchandise that Brian Laundrie took from that <coughs> coffee shop when he was there with Gabby Petito in Moab, Utah. That is, of course, Moab. Everyone knows Moab, that four-letter town in, in Utah, because it is where the domestic, from that image right there in the center of your screen, that was where the domestic dispute call was made and we had the hour-long-plus body camera video um, with police responding to the domestic call between Brian Laundrie and it's Gabby an, It's Petito. an important note, by the way, too, because, you know, it, it brings him back to the scene. Um, it, you know, just the, for the detectives to see that, to see Moab Coffee Roasters, wouldn't that, that, that's a huge clue that they see there. It's, it also, too, <coughs> to... Uh, you know, Moab to us, when, <coughs> when you hear Moab now, what do you think of? Moab, Utah. Yeah, I, I don't I think, think I've of, ever heard I think of, of the video. The moment I hear Moab right, in, my, right. in my head, I, I think of the video. And right. so he, there was a hat found with that. And, you know, we <clears throat> associate Moab with something differently. Perhaps Brian Laundrie associated Moab with a really happy memory. Yeah. Um, but we, of course, associate Moab now with that, just that, that terrible, um, you know, that terrible you know, the encounter point, that, that sort of that, that, you know, that boiling point that we got to see, yeah. we, we can assume there were boiling points after obviously because of what happened. And we yep. can assume there were boiling points before, but here yep. we get to see it. And just to imagine, if you will, the uh, young Mr. Laundry, 23 years old with Gabby, theoretically, Hey, I'm going to buy this hat. What do you think? Trying it on. I mean, all that stuff are sort of brings us to the smiling Brian Laundry right there. It's just to the, it's just a gut wrenching tragedy for the victim, the suspect, both families 
Um, and to think that the detectives found it important enough to put that in there makes you think that what's on that handwritten half note? It can't just be, uh, it has to have something on it that we hopefully will see someday to sort of fill in the blanks. It's just, uh, again, every, you're right. Every time that we talk about this story, there's an additional breadcrumb dropped of, of something that, we're, that makes us just kind of scratch our head and go, what is that? Well, and why is that mentioned here so specifically? Again, it's called, it's called a handwritten half note, and we have no idea what its contents no are. Details we don't even it. know who wrote it. We right. don't know if it was written Good at point. the reserve. We don't know if it was a note given to him by somebody else to, for him to, to hold on to. We have no idea what this handwritten half note is. And, and it could have zero to do, like nothing to do whatsoever with, with Gabby Petito. So let's make that very clear. And then also too, and I'll bring up the comment here that just came in from Stephanie. Uh, and again, we are still reading through your hashtag KJB, hashtag KWalt questions and comments. Uh, the secondary scene contains skeletal animal remains. And Stephanie here saying hashtag KJB animal remains like food he might have killed and ate. Um, we don't know. We don't know. There's an important note in here, too. You know, we'd heard about what was underwater, and I have it written down here somewhere. But basically, I'm just going to say that oh, right here. Team leader Harvey informed us that the search area was previously under approximately three feet of water, which was indicated by the water line on the surrounding trees. And that's a really good point because when we had heard, oh, the water was high, how high was the water? About three feet. Three feet. feet. But now we know how they came to that conclusion. It wasn't just an estimate for them to say, this is why we missed it. And so you can wonder, those, those animal remains could very easily, if it's underwater, the alligators? I mean, who knows? The alligators could have brought the animal remains in you, there. You walk, around, uh, you, you walk around long enough in a <laughs> rural section of Florida, such as the, the Carlton Reserve or the Everglades, really. I mean, uh, the nearby Everglades, you're, you're going to find... You're going to find some, you know, some remains here and there yeah. uh, if you walk around long enough. The fact that it's located so close to the other objects, those other objects being the, uh, the, the handwritten half note and, and the hat, the Moab coffee roasters hat, makes you wonder if, the, if they're all, but it, again, it, it, I don't even think it's ever uh, really explained in, in great detail in this report at any additional point later on. Um, okay, so going through some other portions of the report, um, the, the revolver had extensive rust on it. That is not surprising um, whatsoever as I'm going through just some of the highlights here. Does um, it make you think, though, does this help us with the timeline? Because think about it. The, he go, you can't shoot a wet gun, correct? You cannot shoot a wet gun, okay. or at least properly. So, right. I mean, so, so you would think, does it give us a timeline as to when he fired that fatal shot? Because uh, and he fired the, fired the fatal shot, you might think. You might, you, might um, you know, theorize. He fires the fatal shot before the water has risen. And I think you've pointed out several times correctly that September, we had an abnormally wet September. So he goes in there. We know the date he went in there was September 13th, right? Or he was last seen alive on September 13th. On September 17th, the, the uh, decedent was reported missing. Missing. Yeah. So he's in there. Now, when, it's not, is it flooded when he gets in there? Or does somehow, does he do this somewhere else and everything floats over there after it rains? Or does an alligator that drag That was him my there? biggest question about the secondary area was whether or not those contents floated away um, yeah. And also, too, folks, uh, again, I, I'm trying to uh, be as respectful as possible to, to the subject matter here um, and, and to those who might be watching. Um, but y y talking about Florida wildlife, um, you know, if uh, Florida wildlife got a hold of those remains, it, it could be over, you know, several different areas of the, of the Carlton Reserve as well. So... Um, as far as things being being a little bit spread out, it could be because they floated. It could be for a variety um, yeah. of different reasons. But again, going back to uh, just an all-encompassing, really important detail is that the skeletal remains were found. Most of and there's a list. They go down a list of every bone, yeah. and and it's it, in large part it's mostly there. And yeah. in the analysis, you know, we had and I can share this with our with our audience now I couldn't share this months ago and I'm sure you heard the same thing but in our reporting we had heard 
um, unconfirmed <clears throat> reports um, through through the phone calls that we were making here at WFLA that there were several universities in Florida that were assisting with the process, the post-mortem process with the remains that were discovered here in Florida. I had heard um, various different universities, t- you know, playing part. And when you go into this report, Walt, you, we now know that it was Florida Gulf Coast University that received um, received uh, the, the the fragments of the of of the skull that was found, and they used cement. They used cement to do a uh, a reconstruction of the skull that helped them, pun not intended, but piece together more about uh, about the um, about the cause of death for yeah. for Brian Laundry about it being a gunshot wound to the head. You were noting on the left side of the head, and they did. They used cement to reconstruct the skull with the thirty five. Just to give people an idea, if they haven't seen it, this is one of about two pages that lists every uh, part of the body that was found. I'm looking at, okay, and so then the conclusion, as you said, the vast majority of the skeleton has been recovered. Right, and and looking here, um, look. Oh, I was. I thought I had it. Yeah, there were 35 cranial fragments as well. Um, that again were here. It is uh, ranging in size from two centimeters to four centimeters in in maximum diameter. Um, and, and really, there was an extensive forensic process that was conducted, including at Florida Gulf Coast University, College of Arts and Sciences, and the Department of Justice Studies that were participating in this. And, yeah. um, and so... And the, the way the skull was found consistent with a gunshot wound to the head, as, as you might guess. Yeah, and then all the redactions. So, yeah, it's an extraordinarily detailed report. Um, and what we'll do now is we'll spend another 10 or so minutes just really up until 4 o'clock Eastern, um, just kind of going through uh, some of the hashtag HeyJB, hashtag HeyWalt comments. So, folks, if, you, if you're sticking around with us and you're here with us in a live capacity right now, live on WFLA.com, the WFLA app, YouTube, Facebook as well, use hashtag HeyJB. <laughs> we'll look on Twitter, too, hashtag HeyJB, uh, and we'll look for some of your questions and comments. I want to, I wanna, as I kind of get, the, get you know, set for that stage of the live stream, Walt, I'd like to bring you up here with, with Jen's comment, and you can read it here aloud. <clears throat> a uh, social history may include aspects of the patient's de- de- developmental, family, and medical history, as well as relevant information about life events, social class, race, religion, and occupation. I got this info from Google. Thanks, Jen. That, that helps a lot. Um, and, and perhaps that detective was using it as a term that is understood in his field. And in the field of, um, of, of presenting or putting together one of these reports. But that is interesting. So um, that is per- perhaps what the family did not want to share. And it does make sense because there's reference to his medical history before that. And perhaps uh, as they were looking at this, it becomes important to know certain things about someone's medical is- uh, history in order to make a positive identity in some cases. But here we had dental records that led them to, or something that led them to conclude by 4 o'clock the next day, roughly... Um, 32 hours after the remains were found at 8.20 on the 20th, this says they had positively identified Brian Laundry. Let's get to this comment and really starting to try to get to as many of these as possible, even <clears throat> though there's no way to get to them all. And again, apologies. We try to get to as many of these as we can. Uh, this one from Sandra Miles on YouTube, from YouTube Live, there, that comment section, hashtag AJB. Why won't they release the contents of the notebook? journal and now said pictures etc i don't get it what is the big secret the fbi just fueling the fire of intrigue and mystery this is this is a a fascinating question and and, uh, um the fbi has their reasons for of course their process and um listen what, what might be very very interesting is when the foia requests come back when we you know you know you know, submitted for those public records from the FBI, they might send us a whole lot of very interesting documentation, but they might redact any mention of, of Brian Laundrie's notebook or the contents of the notebook itself. Well, do you, Walt, well, your FOIA you co- you might covered look it. like your FOIA might, might look, look like, like this. that. I've gotten those before. In fact, yeah, how frustrating. How frustrating. Can we just talk about that for yes. a second? How frustrating is it when you submit for public records? You can wait for months, and then the months come, you, you get black boxes like that. I'm for, still, I'm, I'm, it, it's, I actually it's very say, I save them, but I get this. I mean, I get this. These are, and I'm not sure there was one picture in here we would have used and it was from the Northport 
um, police department, and it just showed the scene to give our viewers what the scene might have looked like. But we're not going to use these. Some of these are tight shots of clavicles and, and cranium um, and, and gunshot defect. We're not using those anyway. So, but I will say to this question, why don't they? Because here's why they don't. In my opinion, not an FBI agent, but I've talked to enough. If they do that here where there's no trial, they are theoretically, are they not presenting, they're not creating some sort of precedent where somebody might come along, hey, wait a minute, you did it then. They don't release it because they don't have to. It's evidence in an investigation. And, um, and closed or not, they do not have to release it. And I, I think part of it is, you re if you release it in this case, are you going to be now asked to release it in the next one and the next one and the next one? And the FBI is a federal agency. They have policies, and their policy very much might say um, that we, we don't release stuff. The FBI never, by the way, the FBI doesn't release stuff to us. We get it in federal investigations because it is put in a document somewhere and we find it in that document or it's released in a, during a trial. The FBI doesn't give us things uh, like, like these documents. So I, I don't think they're fueling, they are fueling the fire, but I don't think they are trying to fuel the fire of intrigue and mystery. Um, it did fuel the fire of intrigue and mystery, a wooden box and a, a uh, handwritten half note and, and all that. How about this one from Shannon? It's, it's, on the same, like, it's on the same level as the question we just had. Shannon Condella on YouTube, hashtag AJB. Will we ever get to see the police body camera footage from when they discovered the scene? And, and here's, here's my thing. If, if this, Walt, if we're getting redactions on still photos, then we are, uh, we are likely going to get redacted on any you know, body camera video, even if we did submit for that public records request. But let um, me say, I don't know that their policy, that the police policy, and I'd have to look at it, the police policy might not have required them to roll their body camera footage on that. They're not, true they, they're not, they're not uh, confronting a suspect. They're not entering a home. They're not pulling anybody over like they, like the Moab police did with Brian and Gabby. So I'm not sure that we have body camera video, but it's a good question. It's something we definitely could ask for. Or just ask about. We uh, don't, and we have no, zero evidence to suggest that there's any sheriff's deputies or any law enforcement personnel that normally would be equipped with body camera footage right. going into the Carlton right. Reserve. It's mostly, at that stage, it's mostly the medical examiner's office, you know, the coroner, you know, FBI agents who, of course, aren't even in uniform. They're usually in suit and tie. They're not really wearing body cameras. So there's no evidence that we have that there even it would be body camera right. video. Uh, is there video of the scene? If the year is 2022. I would bet there is. The, you're willing to bet that there's there's pretty yeah. high res video of the scene. But again, if the still images are going to be redacted, you you can bet that the video is going to be redacted. And for folks who ask how you how do you redact video? Well, we'll get we'll get videos sometimes from law enforcement agencies in the area and they'll blur it. They they'll blur, blur it. parts of the video. Uh, a story we we um, had about uh, in Pasco County, they, we had the main subject that we asked for, but the other officers who weren't mentioned were blurred and defendants were blurred, that type of thing. Let's, um, uh, I want to, uh, we're going to try to get some Twitter comments as well loaded up here. So we've got another few minutes left here on the live stream. So anyone who's really trying to get their, their question or their comment um, included here on the end of our live stream, um, and, and you, you've been trying Facebook or trying YouTube to no success, give, give Twitter a shot too. We'll try to get as many of those. Again, use hashtag HeyJB or hashtag HeyWalt, and that's how we can uh, bring up your comments. Um, so, Shannon, thank you. Uh, James Williams, hashtag HeyJB, did they do DNA on the remains or still no? Yes, yes, they have done. They did. This is This is, yes. this is um, news from, from many, many months ago. They did DNA on the remains, and it did positively match uh, the dental records as far as confirming that the identification was that of Brian Laundry. Um, shout out to, uh, to Duty Ron uh, on, on YouTube. I was uh, on with Duty Ron this weekend for a great charity live stream and hope, hope you're doing well. Duty Ron, hashtag KJB, thank you. We now know that the Laundry family dentist rumors are true, or, or excuse me, are not true definitively. And do you remember this, Walt? Do you remember when we heard about, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, connections to the laundry family and, and dentistry being involved. There's, there's uh, folks, this is the FBI and their very, very thorough process. And we have, of course, done our very best to be a shining light on fact-based reporting, fact-driven reporting here at WFLA. And this was, you know, what's interesting is that this was a rumor and a piece of gossip that went, uh, that went you know, 
I, I can't even say viral. It's viral is too strong of a word that people were um, using this as a well. Did you hear about this or did you hear about that? And it didn't even make it to one of our live streams in the past because it was just so far away from being rooted um, in reality based on the FBI's process in determining the remains that were found, um, you know, here at the Carlton Reserve. So, Duty Ryan, I appreciate you bringing it up. Um, but, yeah, we, 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 we knew that that was – we knew from, from very early on that there yeah. was absolutely zero truth to that notion that – there was any falsification of dental remains that were connected to any of this. Um, so, uh, but again, appreciate you bringing it up. Um, Walt, I'll go through a few more uh, questions and comments before um, we start to wrap things up. Sure. Oh, this is a great question. Hold on. I want to get this question in from Dana Houston. Unless you were about to, re were you about to read something? Or? No, no, no. I'm looking for um, the DNA part because I, I just, oh. <laughs> I, I know I saw it. This is, this is a great question. And we should make this very, very clear. Um, Dana Houston, hashtag HJB, can the families release what the notebook says? We and don't know if the families have the notebooks, do we? Do we know where they have the notebooks? I, yeah, I'm going to have to go back. I, I do no, we don't know whether or not the families definitively And uh, keep in mind, the where, even if you're the parent of the decedent, the FBA doesn't give you, give you something back. Um, they don't necessarily, maybe they do, maybe they'll let you look at it. I, you'd hope they let the laundries look at it, so maybe they could tell us what, what, they, what it said. But we don't know that the evidence has been, this evidence, if you will, and has been given back to the laundries. And there's, there's uh, let's, let's be real with our audience for a second. The, the laundries, if, if they did have it, let's just, for a second, <clears throat> if they did have the contents of the notebook, they haven't, they haven't spoke to anybody. So them just putting out the contents of the notebook on a whim out of nowhere um, w w is is virtually just impossible. Uh, from from a just, great thought. I'm not talking to you as, as a journalist for a second. I'm just talking to you as as a realist, as a as a as a pragmatic person. Just the chances of that happening are are virtually non-existent. Um, uh, and, and then there's this question too: Does Gabby Petito's family know what was in the notebook? Um, I, they definitely, they, I would bet, want to know it more than even us, right? I, I, you, if you're Gabby Petito's, um, one of, the, one of the, 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 you know, mother, father, stepfather, stepmother, if you're one of Joe, Tara, Nicole, or Jim, you, you want to know what was in that notebook. But sure. we have no, yeah. I can tell you I have no information, even though I, I talk to the family, I have no information on whether or not they know the contents of the notebook. But, yeah, you would have to, to Walt's point, you'd have to be unbelievably curious to know um, this is, this is your, your daughter that was taken from you. And there's a piece of paper that has details perhaps on exactly why that, that happened, that, that heinous act of evil happened. And you, and wouldn't you just be, you would be begging, you'd be desperate to know yes. what was on Any that piece of Any detail you could have. By the way, I did find the DNA section. I, just a real quick housekeeping thing here. The DNA profile was developed from swabs from both Christopher and Roberta Laundry. Um, and it says analysis performed 11-17 to the 18th. All of these analysis, so about a month after the, the remains were found, on um, a, a tooth, a section of the left right. proximal femur, a section of um, distal femur, um, and then com and then uh, compared with swabs of. Uh, so they it appears as though they tested three parts of the body and compared them to swabs of Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry. So yes, DNA was indeed used. Folks, we're gonna start to wrap up here. Walt, uh, what do you got coming up tonight on WFLA News Channel and 8? You know what? It's one of those things where you, you finding a different angle is unnecessary because there's so much information. And I think, you know, this is where the internet helps us a lot. This is where WFLA.com helps us a lot because there's so much information in here. But on television, um, you know, it, it, it's like a couple of minute and a half stories. So at, at, uh, at, at five, we will talk about uh, how the body was found and some of the items found. And at six, we sort of save a few more information, pieces of information about uh, A, the drug screening, and B, that, that, that wooden box, that mysterious wooden box. Uh, and all mixed in with all of that is just a look back at how this all started and how we were sort of introduced to this young couple with big dreams 
and um, that just uh, it just crashed horribly. Yeah, we've got the breakdown for you as well, everybody on WFLA.com. If you're joining us in the Facebook Live, YouTube Live comment section, you might see a link pinned in the comment section below. You might also see it in the description on this video. It'll take you over to our breakdown on WFLA.com by our own Athena Morris, um, as well as some contributions from our team on uh, on exactly uh, what is in this 47-page report released here this uh, Valentine's Day, uh, February 14th, 2022. I hadn't thought of that. Um, That's very interesting. Happy Valentine's Day to uh, all of you out there, wherever you are watching from. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Um, folks, we're going to continue to... Um, uh, of course, get ready for our newscast tonight, and there's going to be more coming your way on this story and a whole lot more on WFLA.com, uh, the WFLA app. I wanted to point out here really quickly one of the things, too, I believe, and I will triple-check, Linda, for you. Hashtag AJB. Where can I read the full report? There's, there's, there's folks out there that are so invested on this story, Walt, that they don't want to read a breakdown and no, analysis, I, I'm good for them, highlights. By the way. Good for them. 40, I'm, I they like, I they want to read great. the 47 pages themselves. Good for them. And I, I, I agree. Uh, it, it, it's your right. It's public records. That's right. These you are paid public. for it. And, you paid for it. And you, yes, you being a member of the public, if you want to read all 47 pages, if that's your reading on this Valentine's Day, that's your right as an American. If you're joining us from outside the United States of America, you're, of course, you can read these public records as well. And, they and, are public for a reason. And you know what? When we go through this, we go through it. I went through it, I think, three times. Um, one time, um, and then a, read it, and then a second time, highlighted it. And then I think I, we compared notes. And I, you know, I've gone through a lot of documents. I missed a key point that I read the first time, but didn't highlight the second time that you brought up um, about the... Uh, well, you brought up a couple things, too, that, that I had... Yes, yeah, so, right. So, so, you know, and it's... Teamwork so, makes the stream work man so, right and and here let, let's anybody who has something in here that they they want to ask us about i hit me up on twitter or send me an email I, I'd, I'd be and it may be something we missed but but um it's very detailed yeah very detailed report. the conversation continues on twitter you can follow us both on twitter we were uh kind of live tweeting our, our breakdowns of the report highlights if you will um as the report came out when it came out you know around lunchtime today so if you if there's something that that you would like us to kind of uh, to focus on, let us know. You can follow us at WFLAJB or at WFLA Walt, hashtag AJB, hey hashtag hey Walt. We'll look for these usernames and hashtags as well. And uh, we continue, of course, the conversation and the reporting on WFLA.com and the WFLA app. As a reminder, we're going to try to, of course, get you all the latest on this story and a whole lot more on WFLA.com, the WFLA app. To Linda and our other commenters asking for the full report, I'll make sure that it's there for you on our website, and on our app as well. I'd like to thank Walt Buteau, folks. You'll see him tonight on WFLA News Great to Channel be here, 8. Do we have any more? What's going to happen next? Let's, let's wrap that up with that. What's going to happen next in this story? What's the next development? Uh, this one caught us by surprise today. Yeah, it did. I was sort the, of... The, we, we sometimes will get, you know, um, like little tips uh, that something is going to get released. This one, um, this one came out of the left field so to speak. So um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm checking my inbox all the time, looking for that. I was surprised. That FOIA request. Um, <laughs> good luck with that. I, I know. I might be waiting a long time. But good for you for filing it. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, that, that's what we do. Um, yeah. And you file and I file. We file. That's what we do as, as teams of journalists here at the news organizations that we work at. So we'll, we'll wait on that. And, of course, if I hear about it, you'll hear about it. Of course, on my various social media platforms, uh, as well as on WFLA social media platforms uh, as well. Any final thoughts, Walt? Uh, uh, just that uh, we'll, we'll get, dig into this as, as good as we can. Uh, one, one, I do want to say one thing we haven't said, and just to give you an idea of the volume of work that was done, and talk to JB about this. Oh, they, this is, yeah, they, it's they, fascinating. They, they had this l very large area. I, I'm not sure if they give us the exact uh, area that, that was involved as, as square footage, but they went, they went two and a half inches down in this very large area, dug up all the dirt, and then put it they in a screen found, but, but, and screened all of this stuff. And I mean, they found the bullet. They found that. Well, yeah, and they found the bullet six inches down. But yes, so the the amount of work that was done out there, painstaking, anthropological type of work is uh, was sort of hit me by wow. Uh, that that's a hard job, 
and um, and they they did it with great detail. I yeah. think it's important to know. And and then you're humbled when you read some of these reports and you understand just how much science, forensic science, goes into the work that these yeah. teams do together, and also to the collaboration that goes into working between the you know the medical examiner's office for District 12, the FBI, uh, local sheriff's offices, as well as our universities in Florida, as well Pinellas County mentioned in this report too. So. Um, uh, yeah, a lot of collaboration goes on into making all of this forensic work possible. And I don't know about you, Walt. For me, it's it's humbling. It's humbling yeah, to it's, read something uh, it's like impressive this. It's impressive, and um, and it's one of many cases they're working on. And I'm sure for many of these investigators, this might be the case they reflect back on in retirement. I worked on that case because it was such a a stunner in how it developed. Walt, everybody, give him a follow on social media, and Thanks, you'll see JB. him tonight on WFLA Thank News Channel Eight. Folks, the latest for you on WFLA.com, the WFLA app. Conversation continues on Twitter.